Malaysia to send firefighting and rescue mission team to Australia. Pan Borneo Highway construction continues as scheduled. Welcome to Updates at Noon. You're with me, Renee Fong. Former Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak is entitled to take any action regarding the issue of 1MDB and SRC International Sunan Berhad audio clip recordings revealed by the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Agency MACC yesterday. MACC Chief Commissioner Latifa Koya said even members of the public are entitled to their own opinions regarding the issue. Saya ada satu je jawapan ni itu hak dia. Ha, itu hak dia untuk uh, membuat apa-apa tindakan. Itu je. Laporkan kepada pihak polis. Saya tak ada komen lagi dah. Sebab saya dah buat PC tadi ya. Eh. So ya. tak ada komen. Earlier, Datuk Sri Najib in his social media account questioned MACC's method of revealing the audio recordings when the 1MDB trial is still ongoing. The audio recording allegedly contains conversation between Datuk Sri Najib and the Attorney General's Chamber and other conversations related to the 1MDB and SRC International Sundaram Berhad investigation. The Cabinet had approved plans to send a firefighting and rescue mission team to Australia to help fight its worst bushfire crisis. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr Wan Aziz Zahwan Ismail said the mission consists of 65 personnel, including a 39-member team from the Fire and Rescue Department, 22 personnel from the Special Malaysia Disaster Assistance and Rescue Team SMART, and two Malaysian Civil Defence Force personnel. However, Datuk Sri Dr Wan Aziza said in a statement that the mission can only proceed after obtaining the green light from the Australian government and a safety advisory go ahead from the Foreign Ministry and the Malaysian High Commission in Australia. The mission is expected to cost about 2.1 million ringgit allocated from the National Disaster Relief Trust Fund for an estimated period of two weeks. She added that the personnel involved will be provided with medical and insurance coverage protection. As of 8 January, some 2,000 homes have been destroyed with 25 deaths reported in the worst Australian bushfire. The hanging of lanterns in schools to celebrate the Chinese New Year should not be made into a racial issue. Instead, any festival should be seen as a medium to forge closer ties among various races. This was stated by Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr Wan Aziza, who was present at the SMK Pusat Banda Puchong Wan to hang the lanterns up again. Selama kita merdeka, tidak ada pernah jadi isu tentang tanglung ke apa buat perayaan yang bersama-sama kita di dalam negara kita yang majmuk. Ini janganlah menjadi isu yang boleh memecah belahkan kita. Kita negara yang stabil, yang makmur, yang aman, damai dengan segala um, apa ni, uh, bangsa yang ada di sini dengan berbagai agama. Jadi kita datang untuk tunjukkan bahawa jangan kita menjadi isu yang sepatutnya tidak menjadi isu. Datuk Seri Dr Wan Azizah was also joined by Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng, Youth and Sports Minister Syed Sadiq Syed Abdul Rahman, Minister of Water, Land and Natural Resources Datuk Dr Zabil Jayakumar, Foreign Minister Datuk Saifuddin Abdullah, Communications and Multimedia Minister Gobin Singh Dio, Minister in the Prime Minister's Department Datuk Seri Dr Mujahid Yusof as well as Deputy Education Minister Tio Ni Ching. The lantern issue was made into a controversy after some parties alleged that it was excessively hanged. The Sabah state government under Warisan is working to prevent the influx of illegal immigrants into the state. Warisan candidate Datuk Karim Bujang said the government have come up with a strategy to manage the presence of legal or illegal immigrants. The Sabah Temporary Pass PSS was introduced to synchronize the three documents given by the previous government to immigrants who have been staying in Sabah for many years. The three documents were Special Immigrant Registration Card, IMM13, Card Burung Burung and Census Certificate. 
With PSS, the government could identify and manage the holders of these documents. Sebagai orang Sabah lah, dan saya cintakan negeri ini. Okay, kita berilah peluang kepada usaha untuk menyelesaikan masalah yang sudah berlanjutan berpuluh tahun ini. Foreign Minister Datuk Saifuddin Abdullah said there is no decision yet to bring back Malaysians in Iran and Iraq. However, he said the ministry with other related agencies are closely monitoring the latest conflict in the region. Malaysian embassies in West Asia have also been told to provide updates on the latest development from time to time. Khusus pada masa ini, kita ada 58 orang rakyat Malaysia yang berada di Iran. Separuh daripada mereka adalah pelajar. Kita ada 162 orang yang berada di Iran. Lebih kurang 6 atau 7 orang adalah pelajar. Dan majoriti itu adalah kaki tangan elektronas. Dan kita telah memberikan arahan kepada perusahaan kita yang berdekatan untuk bersiap sebenarnya sebenarnya yang diadakan di Oksidekri. He also advised Malaysians planning to visit countries near to the conflict zone to reschedule or defer non-essential trips to the region. The Education Ministry has confirmed the temporary closure of schools in several states, including Pulau Pinang and Selangor, after students in both states tested positive for influenza A. In a statement, it said it is now monitoring all learning institutions, especially schools, to keep track of the situation. The ministry also noted that all schools must comply with the ministry standard operating procedure SOP on influenza A, epidemic infection control, as well as seek prior advice from the ministry should there be a need to suspend lessons. It added that the state education departments, district education officers and the health ministry will continue to closely monitor the situation in all affected schools. Schools also need to be vigilant and if there are signs of infection, then the affected students must be isolated and their parents informed so that they can be taken home or sent for treatment. Meanwhile, parents are urged to cooperate by keeping a close eye on their children's health condition and refrain from sending them to school if they are ill. The Malaysia Crime Prevention Foundation, MCPF, has proposed to the government to review the national drug policy in order to curb the ever-growing drug-related crimes in the country. MCPF Vice Chairman Tan Sri Li Lam Tai said for the past 20 years, drug-related crime rate has been growing aggressively. In fact, the drugs are easily accessible, especially via social media channels and the existence of the more dangerous synthetic drugs. Tan Sri Li said this will make it harder to enforce the law and the police would need more relevant approaches to tackle this issue. Sejauh mana langkah-langkah yang diambil sehingga hari ini selepas kita telah meluluskan uh, dasar dada negara, the national drug policy setakat ini sejauh uh, mana terdapat kelemahan-kelemahan yang perlu uh, dilihat semula, dikaji di, uh, dan diperbetulkan. Saya rasa ini sangat uh, penting. Speaking at the Perlis Police Headquarters in Kangar, Tan Sri Lee also urged all quarters to play their roles to help curb the drug menace. Meanwhile, Tan Sri Lee also announced the appointment of Perlis Police Chief Datuk Surina Saad as the Perlis MCPF Interim Chairman. 
The Kuala Muda police contingent arrested a family of three believed to be involved with drug distribution. The three suspects were detained in a raid at a house in Merbok Kedah on Monday. Kuala Muda Police Chief NCP Azli Abu Shah said during the raid, a couple aged 57 and 56 was found with their son in the house, along with 206 grams of ganja worth about 8,350 ringgit. Police also seized 1,000 ringgit of cash. The 57-year-old male suspect was also tested positive for drug. Further investigation found that the father of three also had previous criminal records. He is being remanded for seven days until 13 January, while his wife and son are remanded for four days until 10 January. The case is investigated under Section 39B of the Dangerous Drugs Act 1957. Coming up next, LHDNs collected more than 145 billion ringgit in gross direct tax for 2019. Despite opposition claims that the Pan Borneo Highway project is facing issues, Works Minister Baru Bian stressed that the project will be carried out as scheduled. He said the Works Ministry's takeover of the construction project from the project delivery partner PDP starting from 20 February will maintain all primary works package contracts to ensure the construction run as planned. Baru said despite of several changes made, everything is still going as planned without compromising the standards and quality of the highway including the speed design that could save construction costs up to 1.2 billion ringgit. Garan kita di Kementerian Sabta Hap ini bukan hanya uh, terhad 1.2 billion. Uh, kita harap lebih lagi, lebih lagi dari 1.2 ini. Uh, we can even think of uh, it could be even beyond uh, 2 billion. Mm. Ini harapan kita ya. So uh, tujuan kita menamatkan uh, PDP ini adalah menjebatkan uh, kos yang begitu besar. Mm. Dan kita boleh menggunakan uh, balance atau kos begini untuk projek-projek yang lain uh, di kedua-dua negeri. Baru added the Works Ministry's takeover is the right decision as they have experts with vast experience in developing the infrastructure in the country. Baru also confirmed that toll collection will not be imposed on the Pan Borneo Highway as previously informed. The Inland Revenue Board LHDN's gross direct tax collection for 2019 was 145.078 billion ringgit. Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng said the collection marks an increase of about 6% or over 8 billion ringgit over the previous year. Selain daripada mencerminkan keberkerasanan, kepimpinan bersih dan pentadbiran CAT, cekap accountable dan telus, peningkatan hasil ini juga menunjukkan bahawa pertumbuhan ekonomi negara masih mampan pada tahun 2019 dan juga tahun ini. Meanwhile, as for the year 2020, the Finance Ministry targets 155 billion ringgit in tax collection. Speaking at a press conference in conjunction with LHDN's Meet the Customer Day in Kuala Lumpur, he added that the government's effective strategies throughout 2019, such as more professional tax enforcement, focused tax education and special voluntary disclosure program, also increased the people's confidence and trust in the tax system, prompting them to carry out their duty to pay tax. The minister added that the government will continue to implement tax laws efficiently and improve the effectiveness of enforcement activities in the effort to address the issue of the shadow economy which is estimated at 20% of gross domestic product GDP. And that concludes today's edition of Updates at Noon. In our top story, Malaysia to send firefighting and rescue mission team to help Australia fight bushfires. Join us again at 7pm for more updates on the latest happenings around the world. I'm Renee Fong. Have a pleasant afternoon.